Okay, here we go. Japanese Temple Bell, Bronze Buddhist. Now we've got plenty to cover here, so uh, let's get to this. And this, we're just talking about some serious wow. Okay, uh, I've got plenty of notes here. Um, let's have a let's have a look. We've got plenty of script that gives us a lot of information. I'm not sure how well it comes up there on the on the video there. But plenty of script here that gives us lots of information. Now, this bell here, um, as you can see, let's let's go with the uh, this here. It's got a little hole here, which doesn't affect the sound. But I've seen this before on bells. This bell is extremely old. We'll get to it, and you'll see that that's part of the casting. How they cast it, and here, this part here is where in the casting they uh, they break it off. And uh, you'll find that this one here has an amazingly solid handle, it's really thick, and that's why I believe it stood the, the test of time. Now, you'll find it does have, oh, there's no cracks, beautiful sound, um, which is amazing for this age. Now, you'll find that it does have some impression here, here, and here. Some of it's nothing to worry about. Um, it's just some impression, and we believe that at some stage it's outlived its um, iron hanger. Um, now, I've done another video the other day to show you what I mean, because I've seen this sort of thing before, and we believe it's taken a bit of a tumble down a hill, and that's why just in these sections, um, which are the softer areas of the bell. Now, um, I took a video, uh, as I say, of this bracket thing to give you an idea of what happens is they outlive the brackets and the brackets, uh, the iron hangers, uh, rust out. Um, that's how old this thing is and we'll get to that very soon. And so there has been, I can see from on the inside, um, there has been no attempt to like heat it and, you know, knock that out because that's a part of its history, you see. And also, imagine if you were the one to try to do so, to make it look a little bit better and crack it. <laughs> so I don't think anyone wants to do that. Um, could be done, possibly, but uh, best to leave it the way it is because that's a, a part of its history. Now, let's see, you will receive this striker. Uh, that's brand new. Okay. That's not. Um, okay, now, let's get to this. It's just absolutely beautiful. Look at these striking points. It's actually been struck a number of times in a lot of other sections, too, you see. And uh, the striking points are delightful. Usually you'd, you'd expect some kind of um, cracking or something like that around here, but it's absolutely beautiful for, for this kind of age. Um, and you'll find that the wear is amazing on both striking points, which shows that it's, you see these petals and all that, which shows that it just have immense age and it's been struck for that many amazing amount of times. Um, now, generally a bell of this kind of age or, or further, you'll find you get wear in here, and that will be its weakest point. Um, or they get cracking in here and there. This bell is a very solid, thick, it's a very thick bell, being, um, it's 24.8 kilos. And, and therefore, oh, it's got a deep resonance too, it shows it's a very thick walled bell. So, you know, as we say, we do believe that it has at some stage outlived its hanger, and, as you can see, a little bit of impression, but that's that's nothing, because this thing, I mean, to outlive their hangers, it <laughs> shows some true age, that's for certain. Now, let's get to this. I've got loads of information here. Um, right, let's see, number one, um, early Edo period. Now, the, the Kanei uh, era, um, it was made in July... 
of the second year, Kane Ninen, um, July of the second year of the Kane uh, era, which is in the early Edo period, and this translates to 1625. So it was cast in July of 1625, and that's what this tells us here. Kane. And then it's me right there. You see those two two marks right there. And then it's kind of me. Then that's uh, that's what that is. Now, well, plenty of stuff. Let's see. The Kane era um, spanned the years from uh, February uh, 1624 to December 1644. Uh, this is even before the time that Japan isolated itself. Uh, from foreign influence for for over a couple of hundred years. Okay, now the uh, head monk uh, was the name was uh, Mitaka Renji, and oh, actually that's going back um, to give you an idea of its age. Uh, the Tokugawa uh, Iemitsu was the shogun at this time. Uh, he came in at at 1624. Now we have. Uh, the maker's names, which it tells us, are Mizuno Tanemon and Fujiwara Seika. Okay, now, over here, the, it tells us um, it's from uh, Shimada Mura, which Mura means village, Shimada village in Inagun, uh, Gun meaning land or states area. Uh, Inagun uh, in Nagano. Now, this is currently the Nagano area, and we found in trying to search for this area, oh, it says uh, in Shinshu, um, which is currently the Nagano prefecture. We found that about um, 40 km, uh, 40 miles from this place, uh, due north, uh, in searching we we found that there was a, a town called Shimada in Ogawa. You can Google search this, uh, Ogawa Mura uh, in Ogawa. So if you search Shimada Nagano, you'll find um, Shimada in Ogawa Mura um, in Kamiminochi, Kami, Kamiminochi Gun. Now, what's interesting about this is what it tells us on this bell is that um, it is dedicated to, or devoted to, dedicated to, O Hachiman Gu. Now, Hachiman um, are shrines. Now, we'll get to that. Saying O Hachiman is like a respectful way of talking about uh, Hachiman. And now, Hachiman Gu being a shrine. And also, uh, Amida Do. Amida Do, which is a, um, a place of worship, which is a shrine also. And uh, Amida is um, Buddha, meaning, meaning Buddha, and therefore, um, let's see, uh, also it says here the owner Amida in kanji, in translation, the owner Amida is here. Now, when my friend was translating this, I'm not sure whether it was like, whether it means Buddha is in this bell, or whether Buddha uh, has something to do with the shrines that it speaks of. Now, if you were to... Oh, let's get to this. Uh, there are many uh, Hachiman shrines. Uh, Hachiman pertains to both Shinto and Buddhism. In this part here from Wikipedia, uh, although often called God of War, he is more correctly defined as the tutelary God of Warriors. Um, he is also the divine protector of Japan, the Japanese people, and the Imperial House. The Minamoto clan and most samurai worshipped him. Now you'll find uh, in this area, which I mentioned, you can Google Shimada in Nagano. You'll see uh, with Google Maps, there's a, a tourist holding some kind of tourist guide, and directly behind him is an uh, Amida Do, a, um, a Buddha, and this is a place of worship. So well, this is 40 about 40 miles north of the region that this speaks of. So, whether this area was incorporated around that time 400 years ago, I don't know, but maybe it's speaking of that 
whole region. Um, and you'll find also that um, there is a major temple just over a mile away from that location that incidentally is on hilly terrain, which we found to be very interesting when we were speaking about this, because we've seen this type of thing before. So we we kind of feel, we feel that we're we're very we're pretty close on our region. It's it's that's got to be the place. But um, yeah, short of jumping on a train and going there to find out to investigate, but I think I think we're on to this. Um, now uh, let's see. So the owner Amida, being in likelihood, speaking of Amida Amida Dole, the uh, the place of worship in this region. So that's what we think that is. Uh, let's see now. I think I've pretty much covered that. Yes. So it's very interesting what this kanji, what my friend's able to to uh, figure out with all of this. And he said it was a, it was a pretty difficult one to do. But uh, we've got some very old kanji, obviously, and being from 1625. Now, uh, let's see. As I say, this. This portion, I've seen this sort of thing happen before, where where you see there's a little hole that's formed here, but that's absolutely nothing. It's got nothing to do with the uh, sound itself, and it's fantastic. And this bell has some kind of spooky resonance to it. It really does. Let's check this out. I'm only going to strike it very lightly. Or did I spin it around and show you completely? Check that out. I've taken a picture from underneath also. Now let's see. Just a light strike. I'm going to use the, the chamfer. Check out my videos of Bari Bugyo, Japanese Temple Bell, Bronze Buddhist, and you'll see that um, we've had quite a number of amazing bells. And you'll, you'll also see that some of these that we were able to figure out certain aspects of um, the things that happened to bells over the years. Okay. Just a very light strike. You hear that ooh resonance. struck in so many different spots 
as if the monks might have had, especially here, the monks might have had a few too many shochus and sake or something, and came out and <laughs> struck it. You can see it's right here too, that's a bit of a miss right there. Okay, let's get down to the the uh, the issue here. Now I, I'll have to send it via EMS. Um, it couldn't go to a place like Australia because it's going to be way over 20 kilos. Australia can't handle. Sorry, Aussies, but Australians, uh, Australian Post can't handle over 20 kilos. You know, we'd have to go by via FedEx or something in that sort of situation. In America, it's okay. It's going to be just under 30 kilos once it's packed in a, a solid wooden box, a wooden case that would be made for it. And I, due to size, it couldn't go by cell economy air. It's going to be too big. So it's going to have to go via uh, EMS, which is fast air, and that's, it's going to cost you about 360 bucks. Um, oh, it's probably going to be, work out to be more than that because eBay takes 10% freight monies, I've got to get the box made up, yeah, probably, probably looking about 400 bucks, something like that, so, you know, it's unfortunate, um, yeah, I've got to get this box professionally made anyways, um, and materials and blah, blah, so, so, yeah, you're looking at about, looking at about that, um, and FedEx is far more, FedEx had charge a thousand or more, now, yeah, that's, that's the issue, um, you know, but, obviously, I'm not going to be giving this away um, too cheap, because <laughs> I had to pay a lot for it, too. So, that's that. That's just awesome. All right, one more strike. Two more strikes. Yeah, why not? Okay, there's the last strike. And whomever you shall be will be the next one to strike it after this, with this. Possibly with this. I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> That's just absolutely... Wow. Okay.